question, there is a line of justice. I don't want you to say, you know, I mean, we've just been, you know, I, I'm watching what's happening with IHOP. And by the way, I want to say publicly, I love Mike Bickle. I would just like to point out to you from the start of this video, Chris Valentin, that I really had no intention of making a video to confront you. This is a message that's actually a prophetic word. On any of this stuff, even things that I have questions about. You know, out of all the people that I've listened to with my agnostic glasses and the prophetic, I feel that I had the most maybe compassion for you. I don't know. Uh, I felt a sense there was a sincere vestige that, you know, beneath the the cloth of the the rich cloth of the Pharisee. N not about wealth, uh, just the the cloth that you're on, you know, the Copeland world. So, but I am going to to confront you as, as graciously as I can muster because of the words you spoke and in the spirit you spoke them by, and. I would like for you to know that I had no intention of speaking to this further. I had set down my own entry, my small entry into this very public conversation. And I was at peace with that, you know? I had some catching up on Legos to do with my little dudes. And to be quite frank with you, I think it's, it's, it's time better spent than this. but. Unfortunately, because you knuckleheads keep talking about it, I'm going to keep speaking to you. Because I say to you that if, if you and Mr. Dr. Brown are so upset that people are speaking on social media, you know, I, I, I remind you, many in the body of Christ are speaking on social because they have social media. That's, that's the age we live in, eh? Okay? So... You know, if you guys would like to lead the way in this quiet that you're looking for, then by all means, be our guest. Lead the way. I'm a tire. Hmm. Ah, ravioli. Ah, mamma mia. But don't fill yourselves on such a high horse that you alone get to be the voice on social media. As you guys speak into this and wish for the hushing of everybody else, I would just like for you to remember your own words. And uh, in the vision, I, was, I saw God and he was intently walking down this path, intently. No, not, not like meandering, but intently walking with intent down this path. Of thee. And there were people standing in front of him, kind of like li defensive linemen in a football game, and they were preparing themselves to resist his destination. And kind of like a Spider-Man movie, he was grabbing them by the arms and tossing them, just throwing them like they were rag dolls, just throwing them. Oh man, no, not my board. Please do ah! <laughs> I know, a little Old Testament. That's what I saw. And as he threw the last guy, I was left next. And I, I, was, I, was, I was positioning myself to resist him, and he looks right in my eyes. You know how someone just catches your attention? He looks right in my eyes, and he says, Staring through me, I could not escape. Those beautiful eyes. You can only win with other sisters and brothers around you. Yes. We have to break the power. We have to break the power of isolation. Yes. We have to break the power of we need justice. First of all, I've been to your church quite a bit, and there's many people there that are isolated. Okay, so if you want to break the power of isolation, you might want to start with upending stage-driven Christianity, of which you are a chief proponent of. You know, that kind that just focuses everybody's eyes onto yourself instead of giving glory. We have to break the power of, we need justice. And second of all, you will never break that power. Never, not in a million trillion years will you break that power. 
the cry for justice is one that resounds in the sincere and true body of the living Christ, and it shall until it. So you refuse to take the stand. You died when you refused to stand up for right. You died when you refused to stand up for truth. You died when you refused to stand up for justice. And we have to be people who say, no, we need reconciliation. And by the way, in reconciliation, there is a line of justice. I don't want you to say, you know, I mean, we've just been, you know, I, I'm watching what's happening with IHOP. And by the way, I want to say publicly, I love Mike Bickle. I, I don't know what the outcome... Don't, don't want to say what? To say what? That you're not recognizing the reality of what Christ has born so that you don't live in sin within his body? So that there's not predators hiding in his body for decades, hiding their sins and their skeletons in the closet? Is this... <laughs> Has this gotten a little close to you, Chris? Why don't you listen to your own word as one who's listened to you, from, you know, here and there from the outfield? I'm pretty sure the Lord told you to stay out of the way, didn't he? Yeah, that was your word. He looks right in my eyes and he says, get out of my way. So if the Lord told you to stay out of the way, I suggest when he's cleaning his own house of predators, and kind of like a Spider-Man movie, he was grabbing them by the arms and tossing them, just throwing them like they were rag dolls, just throwing them. Of which you were unwilling to lift a hand in doing. You let a predator continue amongst this flock of Christ, amongst the charismatic body of Christ, a man who had been known to harm, uh, according to the 14-year-old who had r word her. Okay, and he says he just touched her in, in uh, okay, did you sniff to the bottom of that, Mr. Shepherd man, who prophesies to everybody about uh, Trump, but I know you're sorry, right? For what, politicizing the Holy Spirit? And by the way, I wanna say publicly, I love Mike Bickle. I, I don't know what the outcome will be, but it won't change the fact that I love him. That's right. yeah. Okay, well, according to your YouTube closed caption, we get the point that you love your pickle, all right? You love your pickle. You're probably trying to protect your pickle. Everybody's been trying to protect their pickle, okay? Except the people that are wise. Except the people that are wise, I'll say. He's my brother. It won't change the fact that he's my brother. First of all, nobody should listen to anybody in the leadership at Bethel who is under the head of Bill Johnson, who has praised in the name of the Lord God of Israel, the God who reigns over the high heavens. He took that holy name and he used it to bless the son of a snake. The son of serpents have been blessed under the head of your ministry. Tell me, why should one bird of my father's kingdom take heed to your voice? Somebody posted on my social page a couple days ago and they're like, they said, oh, you haven't said anything about, you know, the IHOP situation, so you obviously are part of the problem. I'm like, I just, I text, I mean, I wrote back, replied, I wrote, you're an idiot. <laughs> but then I realized that I was the idiot for calling him an idiot, and I had just <laughs> answered a fool according to his foolishness and became a fool right with him, so I immediately took it down. I, I, I'm just pointing out, like, Boy, thank you for the reminder of the cackling in Bethel. So holy, right? <laughs> I'm sorry. But you guys, like, you stand atop of a sand mountain. You have no right to speak into this. So in that sense, the man that you call an idiot, and then thus yourself an idiot, well, you two idiots should have just both stayed out of it, to be quite frank, because I'm sorry, but nobody that's under, and yes, you are under the head of Todd Bentley until you can renounce such witchcraft from the house of the Lord. That Moses would no longer be considered the high water mark where the glory shone from his face, but instead that he would use your voice, he would use your grace, your anointing to alter the face of the church before this world. Under his name, that's blasphemy. That's, that's farther than, than taking his name in vain, man. You guys blasphemed the Lord. 
In an age of darkness and iniquity, you elevated a snake head over this generation. You think he keeps time. You're like, oh, that was in the 2000s or whenever y'all did your silliness. Like, the Lord doesn't keep time like you. He doesn't keep time like you. He's, he's right here in your face. Right here. Right here. The God that dwells in me is right here in your face, Mr. Chris Valentin. Mr. Like to be a prophet cool guy. <laughs> if I have a problem with somebody I know, I don't need to post something on social media so you all know where I stand. You're darn right. If you haven't gone straight to knock on the door of Mike Bickle, one of yours, as you put it, uh, amongst your friends and your camaraderie, at least there was men that had the dignity and the wherewithal to confront him like Francis Chan and Sam Storms. What about you, mister? You call yourself Mr. Office of the Prophet. You sure don't come from Nathan. You don't come from Nathan. Oh, no, you don't. This is not entertainment. This is a tragedy. Wait, it's pretty cool, right? Yeah, but it's not always safe. Just hang with me. This will only take a moment, okay? Hey, Nate. How's life? I don't know. It's all right. I've been dealing with some things like every human being and really didn't sleep much last night. I'm sorry. That's fine. I just think I need a little me time. I just think I need a little free time. A little break from the shows and the bus rides. Yeah. Last year I had a breakdown. Thoughts telling me I'm lost, getting too loud. Had to see a therapist and I found out something funny's going on up in my house. Yeah, I started thinking maybe I should move out. You know, pack my car, take a new route. Clean up my yard, get the noose out. Hang up my heart, let it air out. Air out. I've been searching. What does that mean, Nate? Where the beat go? Oh, ain't that something? Drums came in, you ain't see that coming. Hands on my head, can't tell me nothing. Yeah, it's a tragedy of the shell of leadership that is manifest in the charismatic body of Christ. It's, it's quite a sham. And we encourage you and we honor you. When David wanted Uriah killed, he sent him into battle and then withdrew from him. As a company of people, we refuse to do that. Many revivals through history have been cut short of their intention of God's destiny and intention over individuals because of jealousies and fears that get stirred up in the people of God. And we refuse to do that. We shape the course of history by partnering with you, giving honor where it's due. You welcome the glory as well as anybody I've ever seen in my life. I long to see D trying to push my buttons. I said, don't touch it. Now y'all done it. I can be critical, never typical. It's a good with every syllable. I'm a criminal. It's a bit, but never political, pretty visual. Even if you hate it, I'll make you feel like you're in it, though. You call me what you want, but never call me forgettable. Leave you deep in thought, I can never swim in the kiddie pool. Wait, I've been thinking the cinematic is beautiful. Me. I to learn from you in that. And I bless you, and I pray with the rest of these <laughs> that the measure of glory would increase that Moses would no longer be considered the high water mark where the glory shone from his face but instead that he would use your voice he would use your grace your anointing to alter the face of the church before this world yeah the sales can rise doesn't mean much though when your health declines see we've all got something that we trapped inside that we try to suffocate you know hoping it dies try to hold it underwater but it always survives and it comes up out of nowhere like an evil surprise then it hovers over you to tell you millions of lies you don't relate to that must not be as crazy as i am the point i'm making is the mind is a powerful place and what you feed it can affect you in a powerful way it's pretty cool right yeah but it's not always safe just hang with me this will only take a moment okay it's a, it you want to know about a tragedy why don't you read the Odyssey? Let's talk about the suitors in the house of the Lord. If that's too far for you, then, then, then you're offended at Paul, who speaks to the Athenians. Because you men, you carry the same air as the Athenians. You love your high places. You love your stages. You love to pay for your police departments and, and to have these positions of honor. But when it comes to the dust of the earth, when it comes to drinking the waters of Jesus in the wilderness, oh no. You can't be bothered with that. I'm not going to play out on social media to let you all know, well, you know, I believe that Mike Pickle should do da, 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 and this, da, da, and this is the way it should happen. I just, want, I just want everybody to know I'm against it too. Against what? 
Abuse of the daughters of the Lord? I should hope so, bro. I should hope you are against it. But to be quite frank with you, do you really sound like it? Listen, if you can't look at my life and know where I stand, I guess I don't have much of a life. Oh, get over yourself. Get over yourself, please, Mr. Man on the stage. How many of those, how many in that flock that you're speaking to have you sat down and had dinner with? Sincerely, bro, other than your little high paying donors and stuff, how much connection do you have amongst the little of the flock? Okay? And I'm not talking about in your ministry rooms. You guys really have lost yourselves. And I'm sure that you, like, listen, if, if, if it's about your crowds, Joel Osteen's killing it. All right. And we should all be like looking for him because he's filling the stadiums or whatever, you know, or apparently there isn't, they had an issue. Okay. But you know what I'm saying? So like this is this is the problem that we come to with these men. This is the impasse is that they want to pretend like they're among us. But truthfully, man, I've watched this guy for for a good bit. You know, I told y'all how I put on the the prophetic agnostic glasses or whatever. And I'm telling you, man, listen. Eat the manna from the wilderness. Eat the little breadcrumbs you get from the Father in your little devotional time or whatever, wherever you find it. Don't listen to these men on stages. Don't do it. And I don't mean that in some weird way, okay? I hear the Lord because I read his word. All right, let's not make it so fantastical. These men, don't trust them. My goal for Mike Bickle and IHOP and everyone else who's struggling, including the Bethel struggles we have, is that we would reconcile and that we would see righteousness grow out of it. Righteousness is a fruit of repentance and a fruit of the Spirit. And that's not going to manifest itself unless you come to terms with what the Spirit is doing. And the Spirit is clearly exposing... There is... Chris Valentin, you call yourself after the prophetic. If you are unaware of the widespread rampant problem of abuse of the daughters, not just in his house, which is bad enough, but throughout this culture, which you say you want to be a culture changer. So, bro, wake up, wake up, become the loudest trumpet there is. And if you really care about Mike Bickle, then why don't you take note that an open rebuke is better than concealed love? Did you give an open rebuke? No. Did you go knock on his door and give a private rebuke? No. Is he at the point that he's been brought before the church because he's unwilling, he was unwilling to work it out with honorable brothers, men of righteousness, none of whom you've mentioned? You, you have a lot of nerve, man, because you, you're standing atop such a frail foundation prophetically that you think yourself, you think that you're on a good big stage. But I, let me tell you, as one who studied the prophetic in the outfield, let me just offer you a voice that comes from the wilderness. You can call it what you wish, but I know that it is a voice that comes from the wilderness. I say to you, I drank that cup of going to Bethel and I realized the sham, not just of Bethel, but of modern Christendom. I get you guys' show, okay? You've had plenty of time already. Yeah. Do not arouse the wrath of the great and powerful laws. I said, come back tomorrow. If you are really great and powerful, you'll keep your promises. Do you presume to criticize the great Oz? You ungrateful creatures think yourselves lucky that I'm giving you audience tomorrow instead of 20 years from now. Oh, the great Oz has spoken. And to be quite frank with you, without the songbirds and all y'all's houses, they wouldn't be standing on top of, of much with y'all's frail teaching. And after all, a dream is a wish your heart makes when you're fast asleep. In dreams you will lose your heart y'all scamp teaching i mean honestly if i had to live under the teaching of bethel i would be picking at bones picking at bones little bits of flesh barely and it, i'm telling you man like i don't care if y'all are named the highest prophetic house in the land 
then that means this land has serious issues. Your favor will increase. Your influence will increase. When David wanted Uriah killed, he sent him into battle and then withdrew from him. As a company of people, we refuse to do that. Many revivals through history have been cut short of their intention of God's destiny and intention over individuals because of jealousies and fears that get stirred up in the people of God, and we refuse to do that. We shape the course of history by partnering with you. You're not so tough I know that night lights on when you sleep You're not so tough Not another documentary yeah. You know, if you, if you Yeah, you watch, he pray, love, or repeat Keep complaining about somebody recording their hearts Ministers of the Lord recording their hearts Rending their hearts for an hour on the screen What the heck? Then every Sunday you're doing a documentary. And I'm sure you'd win in an altercation, but you're still insecure to me, also mess me up. I know you're not so tough. Because you guys feel entitled, even Dr. Brown, you guys feel entitled for all of your voices to be out there on social media. But dare any of the little in the flock speak up that are that are that it have a voice that's contrary. I mean, unbelievable, man. You know what, you guys, just for this this nonsense right here, I might as well make a legitimate documentary. You know, as one who finished film school, okay, I could literally, you know what, you have inspired me. You have inspired me. Why don't we do a documentary? You know, if any of you guys are down with that, you know, even if it's just a few of you, you wanna go down to documentary uh, on these prophetic houses? I feel like it's important that we move in this place of confrontation with people who, who and, and that we don't run away from our problems. Yeah, amen. So why are you just up on a stage where nobody's gonna have an ability to confront or push back or say anything to you? Why don't you actually, I've never seen you guys sit down with any real authentic voices that push back. You always get the puppy dogs that or have the pedigrees from your schools and stuff. You never want to just talk to some real men in the body of Christ. I've never seen you even sit down a real grandma or something to challenge you. Much less a, uh, somebody who's astute in the word and can speak plainly to you from it. You know what I'm saying? So quit pretending like you're all, you know, a big glass house up there. When you just put on your show on Sunday, man, how much time do you put in? How much time do you put in in the wilderness, Mr. Chris Valentin? If you want to claim the office of a prophet, then have you walked in the shoes of Ezekiel? Have you even eaten his bread? Get out of here. We, we have several uh, leaders in our city they're, they're leaders of our city. They're, they're, they're government leaders of our city. They're business leaders who say stuff about Bethel and, and gets printed. And, and I just call them and make appointments with them and say, hey, I heard you had a problem with Bethel. <laughs> Look at this guy putting up his little straw man, some little city council man that he confronts. Again, let me point out, Mr. Chris Valentin, you don't sit with just your... Your average man, astute in the word in the body of Christ, even in the charismatic body of Christ. I haven't seen you sit down one time and I've watched all kinds of your stuff, dude, to be honest. I remember I was listening to you quite a bit during those agnostic prophetic days. Look, you don't, don't pretend. You guys, this is how you build yourself up. You do your little straw mans. 
I'm right here. I will talk to you plainly. I'll talk to you. I won't sit on your stage. We can sit down in front of your stage and we can carry on a conversation scripturally about what's taking place at Bethel and IHOP and beyond for the wider charismatic body of Christ. I have quite a few issues I'd like to challenge you on and push back. But no, I'm not a city councilman that you can go. You, you can't play that game with me. But that's why, you know what I mean? That's why I'm confronting you in this light. So easy to sit behind a screen and throw rocks at people you don't, you've never met. Well, Bethel's the reason why we have a problem and a housing problem in the city. Really? Really? I mean, I met people there in Reading. I was surprised actually by how many people felt that Bethel was a cult and uh, all this other stuff. I mean, I just tried to, like, I'm just here to see Stephanie Gretzinger and then, you know, I don't know, maybe she caught the memo because she was out of there not long after I was there. So I feel like you really, like, I don't know, man. If, if, if you feel proud of yourself because you're confronting councilmen at this hour of darkness in the earth, like, I just, I don't know, man. And as far as hiding behind a screen, bro, you're, you're hiding behind a stage right now. Nobody can say anything to you. And then you go home and you probably don't even respond to your comments. I mean, I did that in all my, I'm not, I'm not going to continue doing that all the time, but I literally responded to every critic since I've entered this mix. Cause I said, well, if I'm going to call Mike to at least speak to his own brothers, you call him a brother, but he won't speak to his brothers. You guys keep acting like he needs reconciliation. Reconciliation comes with the repentant. It doesn't come apart from true, sincere repentance. I don't, and like, if his heart is hardened to the point that he can't sincerely repent, then you can call him your brother if you want to, but my brothers know how to repent. Do you know, do you know Shasta College has 1,600 students, right? 16. And we have 16, I mean 16,000, and we have 1,600. And you know, we have dorms, we rent at Simpson. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, you know why you didn't know that? No. You didn't ask. <laughs> you just post stuff and say stuff in meetings about things you don't know about. Wow, why doesn't everyone know about this? Because of people like you who <laughs> make statements that you haven't even thought through. This is it. Like, it's so much different when you get a human in front of you. All right, I don't really care about your little housing problem. I speak for one of the ladies I know. She did say that like, it's hard to find housing unless you're a part of Bethel. Like, I guess a lot of people do just Bethel housing. I really am not trying to get involved in that. So I don't care about your housing situation. So, I mean, I, the only reason I'm still responding to this is because it seems like he's trying to just use it as another straw man to say, like, oh, here's this councilman that he wouldn't, whatever. Instead, we're talking about four men who were raised up even amidst IHOP and were strong ministers in the Lord coming to speak plainly with the brother. Actually, way more than that. If you count Sam Swords, Francis Chan, and the others, okay, that have also spoken up. So it, what, I don't know what kind of disconnected wire that you're listening to, but what your little scenario here has nothing to do with what actually took place in the body of Christ. So if you're gonna bring it up and then bring this weird little scenario with your housing issue at Bethel, and try to apply that. Like, bro, you're the prophet guy there? Really? And for that matter, I'll speak up for the councilman. I mean, your whole spew is self-incriminating. Your whole spew is like, why don't you work it out with the person? But here you are talking about this person, this apparently real councilman that, you know, you're making out to be just a goofball and ridiculous without him having the ability to speak for himself. You're hiding behind a screen or a stage or whatever you want to call it without even. <laughs> Those are the reason why we have a problem and a housing problem in the city. Really? Simpson? Oh, I didn't know that. You're not so tough. I know that night lights on when you sleep. You're not so tough. And like, you know what I mean? You defeat yourself, dude. Use a little logic. Then when you're on a screen somewhere and you say, hey, why don't you say that to my face? That's right. 
I want, and listen, it's not for justice. It's not like, let me punish you. It's like, let's reconcile. If you I'm all about it, bro. I will fly to Bethel to a place where I walked and lived among the homeless. There, even in Reading, some. I will gladly come and speak plainly right to your face on that. Well, we won't have to be on the stage. We'll do it right in front of your little stage and speak plainly to your face exactly what I have told you here in this little video. So just to be clear. Now, it's you, on the other hand, who I don't believe is willing to meet face to face in the context with other witnesses present. I sure don't think you are. But by all means, I invite you. I invite you. I'm not like keyboard warrior in it here. This is my real face, you know, here. And I don't do social media, unlike all you guys who have pretty much spent your lives promoting yourselves. Um, okay. Like, so, like, here, here's, here's my face. You're welcome to get on your phone and record your own little rebuke of me or, or, or maybe you even agree. I don't know, dude, you're welcome to do that. But quit pretending like those in the flock of God don't have the right to turn on their phones and say whatever they choose to say. You don't have to listen to them. I don't usually listen to you. It was pointed out to me because of your, your do you feel that you have the right to weigh in on something so haphazardly? You have a problem, and I've given them all. Another one this week. Here's my phone number. You have a question? Before you tell yeah. all those yeah. media about your question, don't ask me a question on Facebook. Call me. Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's in the Bible. I mean, I don't even do the stupid Facebook thing, okay? That's your thing. All right, but if I want to do it here on YouTube, I can ask you a question if I want. Matter of fact, I do have a question for you. Why did you politicize the Holy Spirit? Why did you do that? Matter of fact, I have a couple of questions for you. You went out of your way to profess your undying love for Mr. Pickle. So I would like to know, do you have love for Jane Doe? Do you have love for Tammy Woods? I mean, actually, if you're gonna get biblical about it, like, there, there's no phones in the Bible, man. There's no calling people or Facebook or any of that, really. So, you know, as far as confronting somebody with a personal problem, sure. But I mean, even in your little housing situation, that sounds like a bigger than a personal problem, homie. It sounds like something that's affecting other people. So that's definitely a public discussion. So like, even in your straw, man, you're defeating yourself here, you know? And as far as, as uh, at this juncture in the body of Christ with what's taking place, homie, you're coming out like, bro, like, homie, Tammy Woods, she's already spoken, all right? Jane Doe, we've already heard her voice and the witnesses who have established the charges. You know who is absent, though? Oh, Mike Bickle, he's too busy creating his next sermon notes for his personal statement. Not one, not one of my videos where I've spoken to this matter have I staged with any sort of uh, uh, little notes or something. I just spoke from my heart. Why can this man not come out and speak from his heart? Even sleazy Prince Andrew, who we all know is guilty, had at least the wherewithal to go before an independent reporter and be asked direct questions about something that had affected a lot of people in England, okay? Like, you, you are... Because you're not calling for any sort of accountability, but you wanna throw your hat in here just to profess your love for Mike Bickle. Not one word for any of those that have been harmed on account of Mike Bickle. Not that your love is for them. Not that your love is for the advocates that have been speaking up for them. No, because the, the truth is, is, is you guys have fealty to one another. You know what I mean? But your house is, you know, I know you think that they're pretty and shiny, but they, you, you need to, you, you preach about seeing with the eyes of heaven. 
Well, let me do you a favor and point out the obvious. It is not in man's hand to bring such level of exposure and judgment. It is in the Lord's hand. And you do not want to get in his way right now. I'm sure, look, man, some people profess their love for You know, it's not going to make what he did right. And that's kind of where we're at, bro. It's not about professing our love right now, okay? For someone who's been loved and adored by all you guys all this time anyway, okay? And if you really want to show up as a friend, then show up with the wisdom of Solomon and bring an open rebuke that's needed. And the rebuke is what? Come forward, come into the light, man. Let it be as the Lord would have. Let him come and bear his heart openly, okay? It's real simple at this point. And I've been one who travels far from home, traced the steps my father's roamed, drank the waters blessed by the new white skin. And I've learned songs from the broken hearts of me.